Hello, hi everybody. How's everybody doing today? Today I'm going to be continuing to talk about my 31 day October challenge. I've already made several different videos about, about the paintings that I made or yeah, I guess pretty much the paintings, artworks, because they are multimedia. I've done a lot of videos on this so many more than I thought I would. And I think the reason why is just because I learned so much from the challenge. I've done Inktober in the past and I learned a tremendous amount from that experience, uh, but I hadn't done a challenge in long enough that I didn't realize what a big deal that it would be to me. So in this video, I'm gonna be chatting about what did I learn? What fantastic things did I learn from this challenge or not so fantastic if it was like negative. So the first thing that I learned is that I can make something every day and not die. I mean, I didn't think I'd literally die. It's just like, I, <laughs> I'd not done it in so long that I just wasn't, you know, you're just like, I don't know if I can manage this with, um, without ruining my health or completely neglecting my family. I made sure that I had a lot of communication with my family about what the challenge would entail. And I think that really helped in me being able to accomplish it with their support. A huge benefit of a challenge like this is that um, I didn't choose the subject material. It wasn't even like a prompt. It was like, this is the, uh, the flora or the fauna and you're gonna just need to roll with whatever today's day was. And that was really liberating in that I didn't have to think about what the subject was. I just had to think about how I wanted to portray the subject. And it was fantastic to have a deadline so that I could have know exactly when I needed this done by. No ambiguity, just get it done. This is the day it's due. I discovered that I like my work so much better when I've been creating consistently. I found that I needed less warm up time to create something that I like. And that if I had been creating consistently, I ended up liking the product a lot better. I discovered that the work I like the least is work that I haven't been warmed up to make and that I was rushed to make. Um, I had several paintings that, that I redid and many more I wish I had had the time to redo. Something that I should have known about myself but that I didn't realize was that for me, variety is incredibly rewarding. I know that I'm like that in my everyday life. How this applies in art is that I don't know if I'm gonna want just one style if I'll be happy with just having one style. I don't know if I'm gonna wanna to stick to any one style or stick with any particular medium. I don't know if I'm gonna to wanna to perfect any one medium, if I'm gonna more enjoy being able to access many different types of mediums. I like having multiple ways to problem solve. I like experimenting. I think I might like having the dopamine kick of experimenting more than I dislike the frustration of not getting the results that I want. I've done this in the past, but during this challenge, I further refined my skill of using multiple reference images to create um, one image instead of just using one reference image and then doing kind of a copy and paste. Doing it over and over has helped me understand which images to choose and how best to meld them together. For example, at least one image should have fantastic lighting, or at least it's easier that is the case. Cobbling images together requires more concentration and care through the whole process so that I don't want to end up accidentally using the wrong lighting or mixing lighting and having the image kind of look Frankenstein together, which I think some of them did. <laughs> However, using multiple images helped me add my own flair, my own creativity to it. Drawing from one image is the easiest and fastest because there's no risk of me muddling things or accidentally using the wrong lighting from the wrong photo. There's no ambiguity on the light and shadows. However, it's so much easier to slip into copy and paste behavior and then not actually be adding my own flair or anything to it. I'd already noticed this, but I really got to know how much differently colored pencils move over different types of watercolor and different kinds of paper that have watercolor on them versus just plain paper. 
I discovered that it's really important to pay attention to the different qualities that your watercolor and or colored pencils might have so that when you're mixing them, you can know what to expect. I discovered that I don't tend to like to pick the same color palette over and over. I thought that there were certain colors that I liked and preferred, and I had those in colored pencils. I have them as watercolor too, but with watercolor, you can mix so many different colors. But with colored pencils, I only had a select number. What I discovered is, is that uh, my tastes have changed a bit over the years and what I picked out, those colored pencils that I picked out a couple years back are not necessarily the colors that I would choose now. I also don't pick the same thing for every painting. Even if I could, I pick a different color palette because I find it stimulating and fun. I never wanted to have too many colored pencils because uh, I figured I wouldn't use the colors I didn't like. But what I discovered is, is that actually there are a lot of colors that I end up liking later and or uh, like in certain contexts. And so I decided to go ahead and purchase a bigger set of watercolored pencils uh, so that I can experiment more and hopefully be able to always pick the colors that I want. I discovered that my hands didn't get as tired as I thought they would, except for when I, I think it was a cougar painting that I ended up like putting way too little watercolor down before I switched over to colored pencil. So I was able to do the whole process without sustaining any injury. I have an injury now, after the fact. Related? Maybe? I don't know. I discovered that all cats look the same, irregardless of the species. Tiger, Margate cat, house cat, doesn't really matter. They all look relatively the same to me. Their features are like really similar. I guess it could be kind of the same with dogs, but I don't, I don't think so. Speaking of dogs, one of the things I discovered is that there are some bats that look like flying dogs. I think that would be incredibly intimidating to come across that in real life. One thing I was delighted to discover is that there are a lot of flora and fauna that are being protected much better than I would have thought. I learned that a single camera angle is much easier to edit, which I mean, I already knew, but that it has really boring results, which I guess I also knew, but having only one camera angle for this entire challenge, like, and editing that footage over and over, it was even boring for me. And I discovered that black pencils are the way to go if you want it to show up on camera. Any other color may or may not show up depending on how, how lightly you draw. Like if I'm drawing really lightly on watercolor paper, the only color that shows up is black. And the last thing that I discovered that I'm going to talk about today is that being funny or um, surrealist is really important to me. When I look back at the paintings that I did, the ones that I like the best are the ones that are surrealist or amusing in any way. I think that the reason I'm not doing these, these paintings more is probably feel, fear of failure. Uh, I feel that I don't have the skills to paint what I want. I know that I'm not going to make it look as good as it could look. And so I just don't do it and I just continue doing studies and practicing more and figuring uh, I'll, I'll just I'll later later I'll make the kind of work that I want when I have more skills and I don't think that's a bad thing I think that that's very reasonable but I've been making work for a long time now and I think that it's I'd rather not be avoiding doing something because I'm afraid so I think that I'm going to start maybe creating more of the work that I actually like, and then just kind of being disappointed in my skills. And, you know, I, I'll still share it. I'll still, I'm still happy to share the work that I'm making, even if it's kind of crap, because I just think that that is a more realistic way to understand how artists learn. If you enjoyed my breakdown today, consider subscribing because I really think that this kind of thing is important to go over and I'll be doing more of it in the future. But anyway, thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Hi, Toffee.
Still recording. Almost done. Please be quiet. <laughs>